Hey everybody, AmpRepairGuy.com, there's my phone number and my website, so today's the big day. Starting the 3CX 6000 A70 amplifier that'll cover 50 to 52 megahertz with a conventional Pi output network with some pre-inductance to cancel out the internal capacitance of the tube between the plate and the grid. So, getting all new parts, amplifier will be rated for 10kW maximum output continuous wants headroom 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 you know even though it'll be operated within the legal limit I'll explain why it's getting the tube and uh, I'll go over everything really quick and then I have to get to work so all parts will be brand new minus the socket you can't get the sockets anymore this is the better style socket I have two left this is one of them has tarnish on it. All of the contacts are perfect. No issues with the grid ring or the filament connections at all. Tarnish does not affect electrical connectivity. Continuity, I should say. So, there's the 6000, there's a 6000 tube. That's a brand new iMac. I own that. It's an old tube. High pot's perfect, but no warranty. I'm just showing what the tube will look like. You know, you look at an 8877, not for sale. None of these are for sale, by the way, so please don't ask. This tube new from iMac, it's roughly two grand. He's getting a Pentalabs 6000 tube, awesome company. The 6000 tube is actually cheaper than an 8877. Has a way more robust grid, 6000 watt anode dissipation. You know, 1500 watt anode dissipation on the 8877. 4,000 watt anode dissipation on a 3,000. Also a great tube, but he wanted the 6,000, so he's getting what he wants. So, you have new vacuum variable, well, new old stock for the plate side. I think it's like 8 to tunes of 8 to 50 something picofarads. And then I had one of these in stock. You know, it's way, way more than is needed, but 100 to 1,000 picofarad that's going on the load side. This will handle the current. On the plate side, let's handle the current on the load side. It's getting two brand new RJ2B vacuum relays for the output side. You know, you need two to handle the current. They'll be sped up, you know, so he can use CW or whatever. You know, they'll, they'll, they're going to switch fast, like real fast. RJ1As pulled out of a brand new, it's like an antenna switch box. There are a whole bunch in it, brand new, it was sealed up in military packaging from overseas so um, you know one for the bias switching one for the input uh, RF switching RG was this RG 400 for the feed through coax and the coax going to the input circuit look at this Teflon chimney I've seen people wrap chimneys with Teflon but boom look at this look how thick that is this will be drilled tapped with studs going through like this look at that Look how nice that looks. So I will not be exhausting it out the top like I've seen people do. The temperature will never exceed any of the max temps for any of the parts. You'll see the blower in a second. Now, I don't like doing it through the top because if someone were to drop something down, you know, you know could end up having a B positive to ground short. Plus people like putting stuff up on top, meters or whatever, so He'll be able to put whatever he wants on the top, and it's going to exhaust out the back. It's the Teflon rod for the plate choke. I'm going to cut that down, obviously. Use Teflon wire. It'll be wound properly. Here's the prefab cabinet. There's the transformer for the relays. This is uh, the uh, the relays will be switched by this right here so the radio will have total isolation from those relays brand new output 716 den connector brand new SO239 for the input he wanted these this input connector so he gets what he wants there's the filament lead right here for inside the RF deck really flexible double insulated 4 gauge wire brand new air variables for the input circuit, utilizing a Pi network for the input, rated for the proper voltage. 
Brand new EBM PAPS blower, which exceeds the pressure and CFM rating for max anode dissipation on the tube. That'll be housed in the bottom cabinet, and it's going to go up through the bottom cabinet uh, top cover, and then through the uh, RF deck bottom cover, and it'll have this neoprene material between the two. Actually, I'm waiting on that, and I just thought of that. It hasn't come yet. So... Zero to one amp DC meter for the grid. Zero to five amp meter for the plate current. Zero to eight kV meter for the plate voltage meter. Perf board for the biasing diodes. The way this will be set up is it'll have the filament transformer down on the bottom with a variac to fine tune the primary with a soft start to save the contact on the variac and also, you know, give the tube filament a nice, uh, turn on, you know, won't, won't get a, uh, a massive amount of inrush or shock, you know, that puts a lot of stress on the filament because the filament is uh, at a very low impedance when it's cold. So these are called Supercon connectors. They'll mount to the back of the RF deck and these are brand new. So they'll mount to the RF deck and uh, I'll have uh, the other connector that plugs into these and then the bottom one will also have these connectors so they can plug in and unplug and also have a twist lock plug on the top RF deck portion and a twist lock plug in the bottom which will carry a ground and the 240 to run this filament transformer. Everything's going to run on 240 so uh, the uh, B positive cable and most likely going to have that hard wire he'll have to go into it to connect it but everything else will unplug so there won't be any leads hanging off of the RF deck. Uh, they don't have studs for two additional grounds to ground the top case to the bottom case, reverse connect the diodes on the, in the RF deck and the bottom, you know, between the B negative and ground, so that will never open off the ground. That, that could end up being, a, you know, an unsafe situation if that were to happen. So these doorknob caps, brand new, getting four of these for the plate blockers, four of them at the base of the plate choke. These, uh, these are rated for, I believe, the, the, the most current out of all of these series. These have actually gotten shorter. It's weird. I noticed that. I haven't ordered these in a long time. But if you can compare one to an older one, there's a 50 puff one. Notice it's a little bit shorter. They have the same rating, though, so it's all good. So brand new. These, the, like I said, the price has gone up. And there's some parts for the... For some of the stuff in the RF deck, for that circuit to speed up the relays. There's the blower, like I said. So, that's that. I'm going to get to work. This is going to be a lot of fun. I'm not going to, like, I'll take a video here and there, but I'm not showing the entire thing. It's just, I'm sorry, it's just too distracting, and I need to get it done as quick as I can. So... This will also have a grid fuse and a cathode return fuse. So it gives some extra protection even though it has a really robust grid and also have a uh, fuse on the uh, B positive uh, right before the uh, glitch resistor, series glitch resistors. It'll have 40 ohms worth of series glitch resistor. And uh, well, I'm, I'm going over it. I'll, I'll talk about that when I get to that. So. Okay, so I'm also going to give the calculations as to my friend up in Canada has helped me out with that. And uh, I'll tell you how much current we're going to have on the load tuner, how much current we're going to have on the, the C1 plate tune cap, how much current we'll have on the relays, on the output side. And, uh, you know, just show you and even the plate blockers just to, you know, you shouldn't guess, never guess, you know, it, it's just not a good idea, you know, so... I'm going to go over all that so, so you can learn something and see that everything is built like it should be. So, not cutting any corners here at all, period. You can tell by this chimney. This chimney is like 200 something bucks. <laughs> you know, it's just awesome. You know, and I'll still put a thin layer of silicone, even though silicone doesn't really stick, but it'll stick to the floor and it'll make sure it has a perfect seal. I'm just very, very. Like, see how tight that is? Look how tight that is. And it goes down, I think I, I had them cut it, so it goes down, I think, half an inch. And I'm going to go around the tube for the connection for the anode. 
So all the lead lengths are going to be super short. And when you go to the nipple in the center, the air going through the cooler ends up heating up the strap, which heats up the plate blockers. Not a good idea. So, all right, that's that. And I'm going to upload this real quick, and I'm going to get to work. Once again, I'm still taking in work. Uh, let's see, one, two, two of those are down over there, waiting on parts for the AL, what was it, AL80B. They're coming today, and just need to put the plate current meter in that. Found a replacement. And waiting on the tubes, could test that, and then I'll be out of here. So, I'm still jam-packed over here, but I am getting through stuff, and also posting reviews as they come in. I've been neglecting that on my site. It's just, it's kind of a pain, you know, like, just extra stuff. All this stuff, putting stuff on YouTube. I'm, I'm a one-man operation, so, you know, I only have so much time. I have a wife, too, so I, I can't, you know, I can't let it consume all of my time, so... I think I work on more amplifiers than anybody else. Uh, you know, just being honest and just uh, got a lot of stuff going on here. So, if you need an amplifier repaired, still feel free to give me a call. 203 892 4119, and my website is ampreparguy.com. See you soon.